She told me I had the baseline yeah. And everything will be fine oh, yeah. She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation She told me I had the baseline Everything will be fine She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation Hey there, sweet souls. How are you? It's your force fair here. Nice to see you again. Well, for today's pick a card, we're asking the question, how is my past impacting my present? which is a really good question. I'm excited to see what the cards have to say. So, we have pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Take a look at the decks. The crystals that go with pile number one is a clear quartz. For pile number two, it's a rhodonite heart. And for pile number three, it is the blue obsidian, also known as lava stone. So, pick with your stones, or pick with your decks, pile number one, two, and three, and I will see, follow your intuition. Remember, follow your intuition, and I will see you in your reading. Hey there, pile number one. How are you? It's your force fair here. Nice to see you again. Well, today's um, before I start, I'm gonna I'm just gonna tell you that I typically do the openers about picking the piles after the piles and it was today that I did it before and there was a reason for that because I think for those of you who pick with um, the stones that I place above the piles I think I'm going to start moving forward including the stones under um, my smoky quartz stone which I love it has rainbows in it and I love this stone. It's, it's a very powerful stone. So I'm going to place the uh, pick a card pile for each pile underneath this smoky quartz row or, or um, heart stone. So that's for pile number one. So we'll get to pile number one with the shuffle. And I just thought I would sort of moving forward. That's what I'd like to do is put the the um, the pile number one, two, and three stone beneath the pick a card, because this is my pick a card stone. I usually, with the um, zodiac sign reads, have a different stone and it kind of speaks to me every, every day and it usually uh, goes with the zodiac sign of the day. Or sometimes it goes by elemental. If I'm doing fire one day, if I'm doing water another day, the stone will be the same. However, this pick a card stuff, I really love the look of this stone and feather. So it hasn't really changed. All right, enough about that. <laughs> Pile number one. Let's get to it. Let's put the intention into these cards. And that is how is my past impacting my present? Oh, I see it this way. Pile number one. Let's get your totem, and while we shuffle the deck, we're putting the intention of how is my past impacting my present? How is pile number one's past impacting their present? All right. Pile number one. How is your past? impacting your presence. I see it right there. How is pile number one's past impacting their present? How is pile number one's past impacting their presence? How 
is pile number one past impacting their present oh fervor number 16 I want to read that right now number 16 these are short little messages 16 fervor the ocean bears witness to the happy impetus of the force that once shared becomes fervor. Success is due to abandoning oneself to the power of love. The absence of resistance is the only thing required. The absence of resistance is the only thing required. So are you resisting something from the past? Hmm. Okay, these ones have got to be cleared. <laughs> I'm just saying, they're all over the place. Let's put the intent in to this deck. How is pile number one's past impacting their presence? How? Is pile number one's past impacting, I see it, their present. All right, let's get to the tarot. How is pile number one's past impacting their present? How is pile number one's past impacting their present? I see it. Is pile number one's past impacting their present? All right. Tarot deck number two. How is pile number one's past? impacting their present. Oh, I see these ones. How is pile number one's past impacting their present? How is pile number one's past impacting their present? All right. And the last tarot deck. How is pile number one's past impacting? Ooh, their present. I see these ones clearly. I almost, it's funny. It's almost like I felt resistance with the cards after sort of reading that resistant card. So I find that, I always find that very interesting. All right, and of course, the final card out is always the baby card. I've been looking through my baby decks, finding amazing baby decks for the next week, because I want to switch them up every week, I think. There it is. So let's take a look at that baby card right off the top. Oh. Talk about resistance, what's this? Let's take a look. It looks like you're tied up in knots, pile number one, doesn't it? So it says here, oath, links, to link or to tie, to tie slash link, or links, oath. So is something that you, made an oath to, let's say an organization, an oath to a belief system, an oath to a person, is that keeping you chained? Like when I hear the word link, there's links that are made. Uh, uh, again, sometimes I, I feel like my kids aren't making the links, they're not putting the puzzle pieces together. Like, don't you see that this you know, and, and again, they're kids, so this is where, as a parent, you teach them their links. Okay, 
So when I hear the word length, I think of one thing that is linked to another or that can link to another. But when I see the knot here and an oath, and the key word is oath and link and a tie, do you feel that you're tied to an oath? Do you feel that you, from your past, that's, that is, is preventing you from moving forward in the present, that is um, something that's um, sort of putting up walls, blocks, or um, let's say, um, like almost, I almost feel like with these, when I, when I look at this image, I feel like there's, there's boundaries or blocks or uh, you're in a box and you're, you can't, you can't untie the knot. You can't um, go back on your oath. Okay, so let's see. The law of transmutation. Wow, that's this is a powerful card, the law of transmutation. Because this is transmuting what would be perceived as negative energy into positive energy. So let's read this one. I love this oracle deck. So for the whole summer, you're always going to see these circular cards, and it's the cosmic deck of initiation. It's a beautiful deck with powerful. I really find these messages powerful, which is why I like to co-create with this. It is Barbara M. DeLong. Okay. Law of transmutation. You rise above mundane frustrations and aggravations to see what lessons are contained therein. You find strength within weakness and turn it into advantage. Through this energy, you transform yourself Faith is the fuel for this energy. Through transformation, you use the light instead of just fueling it. This is a flowing process, one in which inner richness and depth are able to surface and become an expression of the soul. So my question so far to you is, if you are going deep within, rising above the mundane the and and when i read that it's the mundane of the news of what is the the powers that be are trying to program you into believing okay and you just rise above it you see it you know it you don't fall for it okay and the depths of your soul and then when i see this knot this oath what and this the question is what how is my past impacting my present? Is that the oaths, the beliefs, the systems of the past? Is it is impacting you now, even though you've risen above it, even though you know well where? But how is it that it is blocking you from doing the soul work? Finding the depths, how deep can you go? Let's see what cat see this cat has been coming up guardianship detachment i feel like the detachment is rising above the mon the mundane yes sensuality mystery magic independence wisdom is the depths of the wisdom within your soul and vigilance you won't give up the tomb of love could it be pile number one that what is got you sort of in a knot is the tomb of love that is number 49 let's take a look mm. the tomb of love in marriage there is a repression a domestication of love in function of other interests of the ego's primordial fears which mark its end the oracle signals that it is time for revolution evaluate what your life is based on the invitation is to regenerate yourself transmutation 
In you, there is always a creative force capable of renewing and renewing, of, capable of renewing and renewing yourself eternally. Again, very much about transmutation, but as we see in this card, and the first sentence is in marriage, there is a repression, a domestication of love in function of other interests. Is that what you feel you have, you've made an oath? Could it be within a marriage? You've got ties to obligations, to duty, to a family, to children. And you are in the tomb of love, constantly transmuting what might be negative, repressed energy into that of positivity, gratitude. I'm grateful I have a reliable partner. I'm grateful I have, um, I don't know, a faithful partner. And so in, in turn, I am faithful to them because of this oath. The oath of marriage. Very interesting. Let's see what the fairies have to say. Pile number one. A blessing of power. Well, well, well. That is number 25. A blessing of power. Are you to find your own power, pile number one? With this gift from the fairies, you can now work with your power in blessed ways. May this gift connect you more deeply with your own innate and natural power. May you feel it arise from within you, right from your own inner sun, which is exactly what the law of transmutation talked about. I'm going to go back to that. Your inner sun, that's your source. You are from a spark from source. You are. Faith is the fuel for this energy. Through transformation, you use the light instead of just fueling it. That's what the fairies are talking about. The fairies are talking about, you may feel your natural power, you may feel it arise from within you, right from your own inner sun. With a touch of a fairy wand, a moment of light shining upon you that warms you and helps you trust this great force within you. With this activation comes your ability to create positive, beautiful, caring, compassionate change within the world and within your world. And when your power arises, you will bring substance, meaning, and goodness and find the willpower and drive you need to fulfill the promise of your own innate talents and gifts. Is this the oath that you are to not only transmute your own energy, but bring those blessings to the world, starting from within you, pile number one? So is, let's say, a past relationship, marriage, um, contract, is that what's Oh, what's the word? Um, engaging? No, that's not the word. Igniting? Maybe. We're getting closer. Um, when you discover, it's almost like when you um, activate. I think it's activate is the one I'm looking for. You activate your inner power. And thus, that is what's impacting you presently. Again, this question is about the impact of the past. It's not necessarily negative, and this is definitely positive. The blessing of power. Let's continue on what the fairy's message is. With this activation, there it is right there. I should have just continued to read. With this activation comes your ability to create positive, beautiful, caring, compassionate change within the world and within your world. And when your powers arise, you will bring substance, meaning, goodness, and find the willpower and drive you need to fulfill the promise of your own innate talents and gifts. With this power, you now create and recreate your own world and find ways to help and support others. Yes, absolutely. And feel the safety of bringing their own power to birth. Absolutely. For when we are all powerful, 
We no longer give our power away to institutions or organizations or to governments. My goodness, pie. pile number one, this is the way of the future and you are a natural born leader. If this is how your past is impacting your present. We all become shining change makers, divine catalysts who make a difference within the world, allowing life to shape us, but leaving a mark upon the world which generations after us may be grateful for. The fairies bless you with this gift of your own natural power, no longer impeded by doubt, fear, or worry about its misuse. Ooh, there's power right there, knowing. There is a force within you, and it can be guided and worked with, nurtured and directed, and it can come to support your very best self. The, this gift is, this gift, this great blessing of the fairies is now yours. Expect significant changes to take place from this day. In this way, may you restore your trust in the wisdom of goodness, of your own power. Blessings, friend, and feel the gift of the power within, the gift that the fairies have shown you on this day. Pile number one. Let's take a look. I am forgiving. Pile number one. I'm already feeling that if you were living in a tomb of a marriage, of a relationship, of um, something that you did not love, that maybe you once loved, like a job or or a career that you no longer love and you're just going about it. You have obligations. You have this, this, this tie to, this oath to something. You are forgiving yourself first. I am forgiving to make the changes. When you forgive, you then uh, discover and um, unearth your own power. Let's see. I am forgiving. Ooh. I am trustful, nope, I am forgiving, 28, 28, I am forgiving, in a modern, oh, by stating, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, to the person from whom you seek forgiveness, you simultaneously forgive and heal yourself. This act of awareness can serve as a reminder to embody the ideal of I am forgiving through the understanding that each encounter is but a looking glass for peering into your soul's reflection. Absolutely. Love the reflection and the reflection will love you back. Condemn the reflection and you may not like what you see. Forgive perceived imperfections and wrongdoing as a heavy heart serves no one but the denser spirits of the underworld. In the divine architecture of experience, perhaps there is no mistakes, only lessons. That's a good way to look at it. To maintain a sense of divine harmony, remember to embody the idea of forgiveness through tenderness, mercy, humility, and gratitude. Keep a feather heart by forgiving and letting go of density of anger and judgment. A scale is best balanced with light and love. That's very true. And do you see how she holds her heart? Her feather right by her heart. Keep that light. Absolutely. I'm seeing this for you, pile number one. Five of cups. Let's get to the tarot. Four of Wands and the Two of Swords. The Five of Cups is disappointment that as this mother duck looks at three broken eggs, she's ignoring the two. But still forgiving yourself for the disappointments, maybe in a love, in a relationships, the disappointments of you keeping your promises, and maybe they didn't. Forgiving yourself for maybe choosing this partner, this job, this career. Maybe forgiving yourself first and able to, so in order to forgive someone else. 
and thus transmutation, the law of transmutation, and thus also finding your own inner power. The Two of Cups, this is what we're talking about, pile number one. What is impacting your present? What from your past is impacting your present? The King of Pentacles, looking right at that Two of Cups, and the Queen of Cups. Do you see this? That the Queen of Cups has turned her back on the King of Pentacles. And what is that Queen of Cups looking at? Let's find out. A King of Cups. Do you see that? She's looking at the King of Cups. The King of Pentacles is looking at this Two of Cups. It's almost like I've got two different groups or couples or lives, lifetimes even. You can live several lifetimes in one lifetime. Six of Pentacles. Equal give and take. The Empress energy of co-creation, which is what the Law of Transmutation talks about. Co-creating. The Chariot moving forward. And do you see how the Empress is looking at the Chariot and the Chariot is looking at that Empress? Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's, let's go. And communication. Interesting. Let's take a look at the Tarot and just see how your past, pile number one, is impacting your present. And what I'm seeing through the tarot is that you've been disappointed in love, especially with the tomb of love showing up. And right beside that, that knot, that obligation, that duty, that sense of duty. Right below that, forgiving yourself for maybe, ah, as the fairy said, giving your power away. Maybe giving your power away to a relationship, to a two of cups. The king of pentacles is looking at that two of cups. This is Taurus energy, stability, security. This is Cancer energy. Cancer energy and Scorpio energy. This is very intuitive energy, and this is very fair, balanced, and loving energy. The King of Cups is a sweet, the sweetest out of all the kings. He's not only romantic, but he's protective, as is the King of Pentacles. Now the King of Pentacles, again, the stability and security. Could you have stayed your past? Oh, I'm seeing it now. Okay, pile number one. This looks to me in, in this um, tarot deck that the King of Pentacles, this is you, pile number one, is looking at the Two of Cups and it was stable, it was secure. It, it might have been a tomb of love as we see in the top card there. However, you were comfortable. Yes, disappointed, but comfortable. Now, how this relationship is affecting you now, as we see with the King and Queen of Cups, is that you're listening to your intuition. You have found your inner power. You are listening to the cat, which is your, er, which is your um, I almost said tarot animal, um, your totem animal, which is the mystery and magic, which is independence and wisdom. And through the, your past, how it's affecting your present is that you are stepping into your intuitive power. You're stepping into your loving power because this is the loving king and queen of love, really. And so with that, you're finding your power. You might have had to make a tough decision with this two of swords and to communicate lovingly with this eight of wands that you're in fact moving on, that you know your worth with the empress. And that the Six of Pentacles you're looking for, as I say, the King of Cups is my balanced king. You're looking for equal give and take with the Six of Pentacles. No more breadcrumbing. I kind of feel that there was breadcrumbing maybe of your past that was going on. So let's take a look at the tarot here, the Five of Cups. Let's start with, actually no, let's start with the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands was the home, right? which I'm, I'm seeing in this image here, the Tomb of Love. You 
were living maybe in a home that was full of Five of Cups disappointments time and time again. That in your future, or sorry, your present, you are not living with that any longer. That you've learned, as the forgiving card says, not taking a look at it as a mistake, but lessons and lessons learned. So, Four of Wands. Achievement, happiness, and victory. After the meticulous planning of the two and the metamorphic change of the three, the four of wands jubilantly emerges. A significant milestone has been attained and is cause for celebration. The journey may not be complete, but your newly formed wings will help you carry the rest of your way. Before you depart, take a moment to appreciate the transformation, law of transmutation, you've undergone and acknowledge the vast distance you have traveled. Beautiful. That's exactly what we've been talking about, pile number one. And giving yourself that credit. Let's look, take a look at the Five of Cups. Hmm. Five of Cups, loss, prolonged heartache. A mother mallard looks mournfully at the broken remains of her eggs. Her nest once held five, but now only two are left intact. She can neither grieve her loss or cherish, she can either grieve her loss or cherish what remains. She focuses her energy. Where she focuses her energy is up to her. Although we learn by reflecting on the past, Take care not to dwell too long on brokenness. By forgiving, right beside I am forgiving ourselves or those who have wronged us, we release the heavy burden of loss and disappointment. That's exactly the tarot is confirming what the oracle has laid out. Two of swords. The two of swords. And I really see in this bottom, this was your partnership based on on maybe only by money maybe you were in a codependent maybe you were as i was so pile number one i know what this is like being a stay-at-home mom not being an income earner and really staying within a relationship and making everything work making going out of your way to make everything work because you were not stable and secure then with the Four of Wands, you find your stability, security. You know you're the Empress. You know you deserve equal give and take. That maybe as a stay-at-home mom, your work was not valued because there was no dollars behind it. Just saying. But put those kids into daycare and see how much money that is, right? Just saying. This is your past. This is your present. So you've learned and you've forgiven the disappointments of a home that really you were locked into, that you had those ties, those obligations, that oath, as the card says. And now you have found your King of Cups or your Queen of Cups, and you're listening to your intuition, your inner power, your intuition. You know you're the Empress. And you're moving on lovingly. You gotta love that. Two of Swords. The Two of Swords. Hidden information, divide, divided, avoidance. A gray jay looks down on two upright swords embedded in the snow. They're actually down. I'm looking at them and they look like they're not upright, they're down. So that's sacrifice right there, both light and dark, I see it. The sword tips are obscured, indicating missing relevant information. The frigid landscape deters action. Are you avoiding a tough decision because you fear it might not work? Remember, maintaining an action and avoidance can demand tremendous mental strain. So this is right below the communication card of the Eight of Wands. So communicate and as we see with the King, lovingly communicate that you are taking a different direction. You are moving on. Pile number one that you have found your power, that you know that you're a co-creator with the universe, and the universe gives what you, oh, put out there. 
as the law of transmutation states that what is within and if you are forgiving even after disappointment you have come out the butterfly you've come gone into the chrysalis you've made a decision with as they said with the two of wands gone into chrysalis is three waiting for you to emerge and be successful and victorious with the four of wands and to fly into the next life that's what you're presently doing and it's that from the past the lessons that you've learned from the past that are impacting your present pile number one and that's what I see for you and I'm sure I'll see you again take care from your forest fairy bye for now hey there pile number two how are you I have normally I would um, record the uh, pick a pile where I have all my decks and the stones at the end of the reading and today I did it before and because of that now I want to include each pile stone underneath my pick a card stone which is this lovely um, and very light almost clear uh, smoky quartz so pile number two there's your stone and we're going to get to it so today's pick a card the question is how is my past impacting my present so pile number two how is your past impacting your present we'll get the intent into each deck with the shuffles and we'll take a look what how is pile number two's past impacting their present right there how is pile number two's past impacting their present how is pile number two's past impacting their present how is pile number two past impacting their present. How is pile number two's past impacting their present? How is pile number two's, oh, I have a choice, that one, that one, or that one. I'm gonna go with that one. Impacting their present. Let's get the, the tarot, the tarot, the tarot. How is pile number two's past impacting their present? How is pile number two's past impacting their present? All right. Is pile number two's past impacting their present? I see that one. How is pile number two's past impacting their present? Last tarot deck. How is pile number two's past? Ooh. I'm gonna take those ones, they're face down. Hold on. Impacting I'm gonna put this here. shuffle this again. How is pile number two's past impacting um, is it that one? I'm going to take this one. Impacting pile number two's present. So Impact 
And the last deck, of course, baby deck. How is pile number two's past impacting their present? Right there. Let's take a look, pile number two. Let's take a look. Oh, that's really pretty. And I changed my banner today because of the pretty clouds. I got a picture. So that's what I was reminding of, of the beautiful clouds that I captured and I changed my banner. Interesting. Let's take a look at what the keywords to this card. It's very much air energy. There it is. Keywords, daydreaming, or small disturbance. Daydreaming. So are you daydreaming about your past? Pile number two? Let's continue on and just find out. I'm gonna move these pretty little rocks over. Duality, interesting. I want to read about this one, duality. We do live in a dualistic world, don't we? Let's just see. Hmm. Duality. Life requires dualities. This is the process of transformation. From unity within comes the need for expression. Utilize others as a sounding board for a honing of your ideas and efforts may be required and they could be your daydreams, right? A deeper understanding of opposites opens the door to options. You may be called on to work on areas of yourself with which you may not be totally familiar or comfortable. Do it. So is this, I'm going to read that again, utilize others, so those are the people close to you, around you, utilize others as a sounding board for a honing of your ideas and efforts may be required. A deeper understanding of opposites open the doors opens the door to options. Understanding the deeper understanding to opposites opens the door to options. You may be called on to work on areas of your life which you may not be totally familiar or comfortable, but just do it. Interesting. Let's see what the totem animal is for you. Turtle. Focus, concentration, steadiness, sure-footedness, groundedness, reliability, retreat, security, determination, and perseverance. Now, when it comes to the first card, daydreaming, and, and sort of small, what was the word they used? Small, um, it was right at the beginning here. Disturbances, that was the word. Small disturbances, but daydreaming is what I picked up from it. And then using those around you as sounding boards. That's very interesting as far as duality. A deeper understanding of opposites is what's going to open doors for you. A deeper understanding. So then when we get your totem animal, which is focus and concentration. It's the complete opposite of daydreaming, really. Because daydreaming, it's almost letting your um, mind just float around and go from one subject to another subject to another idea from another idea. And when you focus and concentrate and, and this sure-footedness, this groundness, that is bringing that air energy the, that down into reality down into let's say materializing okay so let's see what's up here waiting 
waiting. Waiting for things to materialize, waiting for a deeper understanding of opposites, of duality, waiting. Is that what your past, pile number two, is that how it's impacting your present? Is that you have learned patience? You've learned that good things come to those who wait? Uh, what number is that? Number five. Number five, waiting. In love, it is important to let love itself be fulfilled. Waiting is a spell. For a moment, you come in contact with who you are. You are completely centered in yourself. The oracle says you are waiting. Don't wish for anything else. Don't wish for anything else. And as I see this little heart in the cloud, it brings me back to daydreaming. It brings me back to the cloud. Let's see what the fairies have. Oh my goodness. I love it when the cards speak to each other. A blessing of dreams. And right above we have the daydreaming card. Isn't this remarkable? I love these pick a cards. I'm not going to lie. Number 19. Wow. Oh, let's do the fairy. I had the wrong book. A blessing of dreams. Let the fairy gift of blessed prophetic traveling dreams be yours. Under the cloak of the stars of night, let yourself fly and travel. Be free and discover. May the fairy gift of the night that is a wonderland be yours. And yet may deep and true rest be yours as well. May all dreams be teachers, kind to your mind, yet challenging and wild. Let yourself know that the night and the darkness are nothing to be feared, but are only other universes where we humans travel, yes indeed, in different forms. Let the dreams of the Fae come to you and visit them in castles old, crystal caves deep beneath the hollow hills, in the flower beds of fairy gardens. Let the travels of the night be yours. May every time of darkness May every time of darkness hold for you stars beyond measures and may these stars be what attracts your eyes and your heart and know that within you too are the night and day. Duality, yes indeed. And when we bring them together, true magic can take place. When we bring them together, true magic can take place place. Now, as I say that, let's go back to duality. And as it says here, a deeper understanding of opposites opens the doors to options. And are those opening doors to options of different realms, of different worlds? I dare say from this fairy message. That's that's true. Let there be night visions, nocturnal adventures, and greater understanding of the darkness both within and without and within yourself. You shall now see what shines within times of darkness and be aware of the blessings of the gift of creating cosmic connections and perceiving galactic energies. You are a child of wonder and of night and from this time forth, let your night and your dreams be true friends to you, gifted by fairy, blessed by the elementals who know the ways of the in-between worlds, fairy blessings of the night, and of your dreams to you, friend. I love these pick -a cards. Pile number two, this these oracles are basically saying that what, how your past is 
is impacting your present is through your dreams, through the duality of light and dark within you, is through night and day, sorry, night and day, through daydreams, which Carl Jung beautifully describes as active imagination. And then when you sleep and rest your body, your mind, which is, I would say the the vessel, uh, your vessel is your body, but it's almost like the computing system, the, the personality. Someone said, and I don't know who, I'll look it up, that the soul resides in the mind. That's your personality. So your mind takes you to other places. And maybe through these daydreams, through these night dreams, maybe waiting for a deeper understanding of the duality within the light and the dark, then you can wake up and ground these dreams, creating them in this 3D world reality. Let's take a look. I hold purity in highest esteem. Purity. Okay. I hold purity in highest esteem. And I'm noticing the chakras all lit up. I hold purity. Number 20. In highest esteem. Purity is the state in which a substance is free from contamination, pollution, or anything that is debased, the matter materialized. <laughs> or anything that debases the matter materialized. Out of context, the notion of this ideal may evoke feelings of memories tied to overzealous philosophies on chastity, abstinence, and other dogmatic tendence of belief, but contextualized as an ideal in relationship with perennial philosophy and the embodiment of nature as the manifested energies of the universe, we may be reminded that purity is something to be held in esteem so that the inner spirit is refined enough for the soul of the natural world to reverberate through Conscious awareness. Hindu philosophy holds that there are seven main chakra centers within the body, and these spinning wheels of energy correspond to a des designated space where life force flows. When a chakra is out of balance, daily life may encounter unbalanced experiences and confusion and may take a s the space of clarity. The ancient Egyptians also believe in the notion of seven energy centers, but related each center to specific glands within the endocrine system, including the pineal, pituitary, thyroid, thymus, adrenals, spleen, and tests, testes or ovaries. The synthesis of Hindu and Egyptian philosophies may be found in the ideal of an embodied nature which purifies the spirit and allows the nectar or Godhead to spin the wheels of energy, moving us forward into our greatest potential. The pyramid texts of Saqqara, believed to be the oldest religious writings in the world, detailed seven sacred oils used in daily temple ritual, funeral rites, cosmetics, and medicines. The nectars were said to be perfumed with the most beautiful fragrances imaginable. And during the reign of Ramses III, he was fabled to have offered more than 16,000 of these sacred oils in reverence to these sacred avatars of nature. The lotus flower was seen to correspond to and activate the crown of Osiris. The oh. Shahazav. Where is the emphasis? On which syllable? Sahasvera. I'm going to say it that way. 
chakra, sandalwood for the eye of Horus, and Ajna chakra, amber, Kashmir for the throat of Thoth, or Vijuda Vish, Vish, chakra, Atar of roses for the heart of Isis, or Anahata chakra, jasmine for the solar plexus of Ra, or Menipura chakra, musk for the spleen of Hathor, and oh, <laughs> these words, uh, let's say Svadhisthara, Tharna chakra, and red amber for the base of Set, or Maldura chakra. In learning how to cleanse, activate, and purify our life force centers, we accelerate our awareness and ascension into higher learning. Esteeming purity aligns with knowing the body to be a temple, a sacred space which must be cared for and valued as the house of our wisdom and spirit occupy. Because as the great William Blake once wrote, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is infinite. Interesting, if the doors of perception were cleansed, the doors of perception utilize others as a sounding board and a deeper understanding of opposites open the doors, the doors of options and here it says the doors of perception so has your past and how it's impacting your present could it be how you take care of your chakras your chakra centers your energy centers how you take care of your vessel your body how you feed your body how you feed your mind how you feed your heart, your soul, how you speak to yourself, what it is that you think and say and do for yourself throughout the day and every day. Interesting. Let's continue with the tarot. Hi Priestess, I think you're doing some soul work. You're finding information through your dreams, both the active imagination and daydreams and through the night when you go into other realms. Pile number two, the nine of pentacles of your independence and infinite, infinity and justice. Wow, balancing everything out and aligning these chakras, being patient and waiting for realizations, for dreams, for deeper understanding of duality, for bringing this information down into this 3D world so your soul can comfortably live in your vessel. To listen, do you see the same colors of this high priestess? The Nine of Pentacles, again, grounding your independence with the independence of your soul and you realize that your soul is infinite and the balance of both. Weaving do you see that soul's web? Oh my goodness, and the intricacy of that. Ten of Cups. Look at this. Pile number two. The Wheel of Fortune. Oh, the lovers being patient and waiting. And do you see that heart? Are you dreaming of a lover? Are you dreaming of your soulmate and the Knight of Pentacles? Continuing to do the work, that slow and steady work, that diligence, that determination of the Knight of Pentacles and grounding all of this, I would dare say, higher power, higher um, knowing, knowledge, your magic, the blessings of dreams, the duality of spirit and 3D it, uh, of your soul, of your, I'm hearing, I'm listening your soul in this 3D world, of balancing that out, of continuing to do the work, to ground the Two of Cups. We have both the lovers and the Two of Cups. 
you're patiently waiting the Queen of Pentacles and of course the Knight of Pentacles does the Queen's bidding the Tower and the Hermit so the Tower this is a realization an epitome a, a, something that hits you like a ton of bricks and it could be the realization of your I'm going to say your infinite oh how am I going to say this I want to say infinity I want to say infinite I want to say that you are a spark of God, a soul living within this body and that this body is powerful when you align these energy centers known as chakras. And when you tap into your dreams both and having the ability to do it within the day and the night, when learning about the depths of your own duality and balancing that out with this justice card that your independence in this real world is in, and I'm going to say 3D world in this material world your independence in this material world is actually a reflection of your independence and freedom within the spirit realm if you are waiting pile number two that you hold yourself and your body your mind, your heart and your soul to such high regards that you are waiting for a Two of Cups, for a divinely guided relationship with the Lover's card here. That it's this Queen of Pentacles and her financial independence as well as her worth she knows. And she's looking right at that Two of Cups going, yeah, I'm just waiting. I have all the time in the world. This ta And she's looking away from that tower because that tower is what brought her into that hermit mode. I think you're coming out from the past and then you could have experienced a tower moment of the past that could be a near-death experience for some of you. Um, whether it be, I don't any near-death experience, right? It could have been a car accident. It could have been, a, um, again, a near-death experience. That when you woke up, you could have fallen into, I don't know, a... a a coma or something that really took you out physically and when you woke up you might have brought information from those worlds from that dream world the only reason why I say that is because I've I've experienced it that's the only reason why I say that let's take a look at the tarot I want to get these messages starting with I'm gonna start with that nine of Pentacles or do I want to start with the balance card mm. nope I'm gonna go with nine of Pentacles nine of Pentacles independence material stability affluence a composed cougar rests on a solid foundations encircled by a ring of engraved stones in this golden lit and plentiful space where she resides she is confident and content with all her base needs met she looks up wondering what else might be possible take a moment to appreciate the luxury around you through self-reliance and a strong work ethic you have surrounded yourself with the finer things and that's exactly the energy of the Queen of Pentacles. Now, justice. Let's take a look. That's exactly what it is. And the diligence of the Knight of Pentacles. Interesting. And the Ten of, we've got the Ten of Cups, the Lovers, the Two of Cups. Has what you've learned from the past, pile number two, about love, about relationships, about loving yourself first, about attracting those with full cups, as we see here with two full cups, both 
represented by um, Mars and Venus. Have you learned? Has your past brought you to this point of appreciating duality, appreciating I have both masculine and feminine on this card, of appreciating the duality of both genders, of appreciating the duality of an infinite soul living in a vessel that has a lifetime. It's not an infinite vessel. It only lasts really about a hundred years. And on a timeline, that's a, like a, just a snap of the fingers when, it, when you think about the universe, right? It's just such a small, short time. It, it makes one wonder why we worry so much about insignificant, tiny little things. And that's where the witiko, go. That's where the powers that be want to keep us there so that we don't discover our, the powers of our dreams, the powers of duality between the genders, the powers of waiting for what you deserve, for what you're bringing in, for what you're manifesting, for living in the luxury of. And, and do you notice that this is nature? This is not a city. This is the, the, the wonder and the luxury of nature. Now, justice. Yeah, this is what you've learned, and this is what's impacting your present, is learning this from your past. Justice. This is beautiful, pile number two. Truth, clarity, patience. Patience! We have the waiting card and karma. If your actions and intentions have been in alignment, and we do have an alignment card right here, in alignment with the greater good, justice will appear as magnificently as the rising sun after a dark night. Again, duality. It's rays of truth illuminating all shadows and obscurities in your path. If, however, your activities have caused harm and confusion, be prepared for the spider's bite. This card signifies that balance will be restored. As the spider, justice is patient and methodical. Like the process of weaving a web. Detail matters when uncovering the truth. Justice will persist until the entire woven network of facts has been established. Persist, focus, concentration, steadiness, sure-footedness, groundedness. This is justice right here in your totem animal. Absolutely, justice will persist until the entire woven network of facts has been established. The spider totem asks you to be mindful when making important decisions, carefully considering how your actions will impact yourself and others. All causes have their effects, so strive for harmony. The choices we make reverberate through the entire realm, web entire web of reality. I want to say this, especially with one of my, I think it was boy number one, when we were talking about the web, like the WWW, the World Wide Web. He's like, with every web, there's a spider. Who's the spider? Oh, that was a good question, I thought. I never thought of it that way, right? And I say that because when that last um, sentence says, the choices we make reverberate throughout the entire web of reality, I want you, pile number two, to also think about what you're putting out on the web. If you are, let's say, a content creator, if you are, I don't know, if you're on social media and then you post on a regular, what is it that you're putting out there? Is it holding purity in high esteem? Do you talk and for some of you, you might um, interpret dreams, and, and this is what you do for a living. For others, you put out dreams, um, daydreams, just little thoughts, little inspirational thoughts, like a daydream. Like, you know, those I love those people that put out those um, inspirational thoughts that some of them will get, get me to get emotional and, and, and tears will fall down my cheeks when I read some of them. I go, oh, and I don't know where they got them from. I have no idea, but they reached me. What is it that you're putting out there? High Priestess, what is it that you're putting out there? Pile number two. And is this what your past is impacting? Were you one that were was affected, as I was, um, with inspirational posts? Um, were you a, a dream catcher? Were you someone that 
that really saw the positive and negative in the web and you wanted to be a part of the positive. Maybe you were part of the negative in posting things that made fun of others or that were sarcastic or whatever, I don't know. And through you hold purity in highest esteem, waiting for your Ten of Cups, the Lovers, the Two of Cups to come. You're working on yourself. You're working on alignment. You're working on interpreting your dreams. You're working on listening to your intuition. High Priestess, Wisdom, Subconscious, Intuition, and Mystery. The High Priestess will make her appearance when the answers derived from a rational mind leave us feeling detached or unfulfilled. There are some ways of knowing that aren't based on logic or reason. Wisdom lies beneath the surface of the thinking mind, and the High Priestess is its guardian. She will be your guide if you choose to dive into the mystery, into the mysterious dream-like inner world. And we have the blessings of the dream and the duality. Also, talked about a deeper understanding of opposites opening the doors to options. You may be called on the work on areas of yourself which you may not be totally familiar or comfortable doing. Just do it. You might not feel uncomfortable going into your subconscious of going into the active imagination as Carl Jung describes it. Do it. She is the guardian. She wants that, that holds your soul's wisdom. Whatever happened to you in the past, your past, has really gotten you to this point, pile number two, of going deep within, even going through. You might have been a child that had nightmares and you were afraid of the dark, and now you're not. That the Ten of Cups, the wheel has turned in your favor. This is jumping off a karmic wheel and knowing that what you put out into the world, again, like the spider, it reverberates all through the web. So what is it that you're putting out there? And you're doing the diligent work to maybe teach others about their dreams, about their chakras, about their subconscious, about their dreams, about dualities, about the beauty of dualities through, through the Two of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles bringing it all down with the Nine of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles bringing it all down. This might cause towers you might have had a tower in the past that made you go deep within to the hermit to find your star and then ground the knowledge that is within you in buried deep in your subconscious. Wow, this was powerful. Pile number two. And that's what I see for you. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number three. How are you? It's your forest fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, pile number three. I usually do the pick a card cards with the stones after the read. Today, I did it before the read. So because of that, I've decided that I want to put the stone, maybe it was the stone that guided you to this pile, I'm going to include the stone into the reed and just put it beneath my beautiful, I love this smoky quartz heart stone. It has rainbows. I don't know if you can see it on, on film, but it has beautiful rainbows and stuff in it. So it's quite a powerful stone. So as I say that, we're going to put the intention of today's pick a card into each deck. And that is, how is pile number three's past? impacting oh Scorpio do I take it it's upright yeah no no I want it all down all right I I had that with another pile or another pick a card I'm gonna just get Scorpio back in for some of you could be you could have had a past with a Scorpio. You could have strong Scorpio in your chart. You could be a Scorpio Sun, Moon, Rising, have a Scorpio Mars or Venus. So that's just for some of you. We'll see if Scorpio comes back out. All right. So how is P 
pile number three's past impacting their present. Let's see. Let's get the totem. The totem animals, how is pile number three's past impacting their present? They're all sticky. How is pile there right there? Pile number three's past impacting their present. Let's get some fairies. I've been loving these fairies. I'm gonna when this week is done, I'm gonna be sad to put these away and get another fairy deck out. I have quite a few, so I have enough fairy oracles to I think to get through the whole summer. So the blessings of mothers. We've seen that before. Alright. So what is pile number three's past? How is it impacting their present? How is pile number three's past impacting their present? Oh, right there. Literally stuck to my hand. All right, how is pile number three's impacting their present. How is pile number three's past impacting their present? Let's get the tarot. How is pile number three's past impacting their present? How is pile number three's past impacting their present. How is pile number three's past impacting their present? How is pile number three's past impacting their present? How is Pile number three's past impacting their present. There's two there that want to come out. One. How is it impacting their present? I do have to say, pile number three. These reads have been <laughs> really, these picket cards, I'm loving them. I'm really, really loving them. Last tarot deck. How is pile number three's Their present. Oh, that one really jumped out at me. And that one. And let's do that one. And that one. And of course, my last deck, the little baby cards. How is pile number three's past impacting their present. Let's take a look. All right, pile number three. Let's take a look. That's an interesting image, isn't it? I don't even know what that is, pile number three. Let's take a look. Pile number three, what is that? And why can't I find, there it is, a compass, okay, guide, and direction. So has your past impacted your present by giving you guidance and direction? That's awesome, actually. Let's take a look. 
Oh my goodness, stop. Scorpio came out. Stop it. Scorpio came out. Well, well, well. See, here's the thing. I love cards. I love my angels. I love the spirit realm. I love God. And when magic happens on this table, right in front of my eyes, I even said, I'm going to like shuffle Scorpio back in. I don't know how many times I shuffled, but I did. And Scorpio came out. Oh my goodness, I get goosebumps. I get excited. I want to read more cards and experience more magic. And it's with you, my sweet souls. Pile number three. This is going to be a good one. I'm telling you. Okay, Scorpio. Where are you, Scorpio? Dualism. The rising phoenix energies. Feet planted firmly and the spirit soaring. You are ready to allow some issues to pass on. You renew by letting go. Energy flashes and spurts. Let, look, sorry, look at present situations from a new viewpoint. Interesting. Time is ripe to weed the garden and eliminate things that are no longer productive to your growth. I really feel that you have outgrown your past, that you are in going in a new direction, that you are being guided to do so. Let's see what your, look at that, and I get Taurus energy right below Scorpio. That's the opposite of Scorpio, opposition. I believe North no or the North Node is still in Taurus and it's going to move into is it Aries? I think it's an Aries Libra um, axis that it's moving into. Tenacity, dependability, groundedness, selflessness, control, passion, influence, stability, and perseverance. Doesn't that kind of sign like a Scorpio? I think it does, but it's the opposite. It's very Taurus, a new beginning. I think this is very clear, pile number three. You are going in a new direction with guidance from your spirit. I think you're following your spirit that you have learned the, the power of duality, of being grounded as the bull is, being grounded in this 3D world and letting your spirit be your guide. Oh, a new beginning, 24. 24. Oh, that's the wrong book. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. 24. I am flabbergasted and I love being this way. A new beginning. You're in front of a new beginning. Try asking yourself, where is the real light source that I call love? In this way, thanks to the impulse of love, you will approach your inner center. Yes, indeed. And you will see your original nature, that intimate and deep flame that dwells in the depths of your being. Interesting. And as Scorpio says, it's the rising Phoenix energies, but your feet are planted firmly in the ground and your spirit is soaring. That is you falling in love with you. Week, pile number three. Oh my goodness gracious me. A, a blessing of a safe place in the world. You are protected while you're doing this as well. A blessing of a safe place. 44. I've got to look that up. Um, before I get to the fairy message, I'm going to look up 44. 44 is calling to me interesting your guardian angel is wrapping you in a cloak of loving protection you are safe and it says right here a blessing of a safe place pile number three let's take a look pile number three i'm loving this okay pile number three 44 the fairies know what it is like to find the safe places in the world for theirs are under siege and have been for such a long time. 
The fairies know how, it, how to find the little home in the forest or the garden that is growing wild, the roots of old trees and the hollows beneath the sacred hills. In these places they have grown stronger and stayed safe. And they now transfer to you a part of this gift. You will now find places and spaces within the world where you will feel free to be completely yourself, where you too can grow strong and bright again and need have no fear. Let there be a shelter and a sanctuary for you and your soul where you can learn what it is you're meant to do next and where there is no harsh word spoken, only guidance. And we have the guidance card, first card out, that can help ease us all into the next stage of our lives. Let the safe places become our homes, our workplaces, our friendships, and our schools. Let the world become a safer place and let the natural world shelter you with her turning and showing of the changes about you. Make not a fortress of this space you find, but let it begin to grow in your heart so that wherever you go, others feel safe with you and the world changes in small but bright and beautiful ways, all as a result of this blessing of the fairies. Blessings of a sanctuary, a safe space to you. Friend, beautiful. This is finding self-acceptance. This is finding a safe space within your heart first. So, has the past led you to a new beginning, pile number three? Has your past, and it's how has your past? Your past has really driven you to find you and to rely on you as your safe place with self-acceptance to then propel you forward into a new beginning and letting your spirit guide you and yet staying grounded. I can be trusted and it's trusting yourself first and then you can extend your trust to others, to the world, to institutions and industries, where whatever that means to you. Right now there is not a lot of trust for the governments, for corporations, for industries. There's not a lot even for our own uh, relationships, husbands and wives and families and children and parents. There's not a lot of trust at all. But this is an in-between. We are going through major changes, not just through the earth with the poles changing, not just astrologically with major transits happening that we haven't seen in hundreds of years but also within we are on the let's say the new beginning of the new age of Aquarius of ascension of maybe going from the 3d where we've been held down through the 4d into 5d so I can be trusted this is beautiful I can be trusted. Number 14. Trust is a fluid word synonymous with the ability to have strength in one's belief about another or about oneself. At the same time, it is also a word tied to law, as trust can also be applied to a legal agreement where one becomes a custodian to protect valued assets for the sole benefit of another. Following I can be trusted means staying aligned with your core values. Not being trustworthy carries a high price, as the weight of your soul is not measured in gold, but by the feather of Mahat. Then true value is found in the heart that is alchemically golden. In, I have mentioned this before, but I feel as if I've got to say it to you, pile number three. And it could very well be what you've experienced. And that is my heart, as it says here. But by the feather of my hat, a true value is found in the heart that is a chemically golden. 
Now, I have said, I truly believe I have a Kintsuji heart. Kintsuji is a Japanese art form of taking something that's broken and putting it back together using gold as a bonding agent. So the cracks and the breaks, they all shine and they're golden. And once was when once and what was once thought to be broken and trash then becomes treasured again because of the gold used to repair it. Now, I say that when my heart was broken and it was just not not just broken into five or six or ten pieces, absolutely shattered that at the time I had five young little kids whose hearts were also broken that I had to sweep up the shards of my broken heart and put on a really strong face for my children and that face was that of joy was that of happiness was really transmuting Scorpio style I am a Scorpio rising uh, tragedy and, and heartbroken into love, gratitude, forgiveness, trust. And in, in between dealing with children, now instead of a married stay-at-home mom, I'm a single working mom, right? I took time to open up that imaginary box with all of those shards and I, with love, love was my gold, I put each shard back together and used so much gold, so much love, that I now, as I read this, believe and know I have a heart of gold. And so the true value is found in the heart that is alchemically golden. So my question to you, pile number three, is was your heart shattered? as mine was in the past and that has now given you that kintsuji heart you've put the work into it as i did and now you have a heart of gold oh i'm so proud of you for doing it because i know how much work it takes the alchem in the alchemy context gold is symbolically considered the king and it elementally corresponds with the sun and the heart awareness and Sahara, the crown chakra. Sa Sahara, my apologies. The crown chakra. The crown or seventh chakra, when activated, is believed to allow a space of pure consciousness to be attained. In this space, you unlock the ability to transform into the divine and do whatever you will or wish. The paradox is, when you get to this point, it is not material desire that activates awareness, but it's the heart's desire to live in the light of truth. Living always in the light of truth can be challenging in modern times. To attain awareness and protect your values, you are protected, absolutely, while still being present in the world requires a balanced scale. Philosophically speaking, Aristotle's golden mean provides a series of tenets to balance the mind, heart, and spirit so as to follow the middle path by avoiding excess and being aware of where there may be a deficiency. A deficiency in honesty lends itself to secrecy, but too much honesty can lead to gossip and unnecessary chatter. Too much temperance leads to a lack of awareness, but not enough can call forth self-indulgence and extravagance. Not enough friendship can cause loneliness, but too much can mean only superficial relationships. Too much generosity causes toxic ac excess, but not enough can lead to stinginess. No self-control can bring indecision too much impulsiveness. Life is lived in the space between, and the trustworthy soul lets its golden light be felt through balanced action and the word, the will being executed in accordance with the law of Mahat. 
That's a beautiful message for you. Pile number three. Let's get to the tarot. Let's see what the tarot has. The Knight of Cups. I call this my creative night. The Sun, as mentioned in I Can Be Trusted. And the King of Pentacles, which very much brings me back to the bull with that Taurus energy. The Seven of Swords. Oh, there might have been a time in your past that you were a victim to lies, betrayal, and um, I'm going to say skeevy, sneakiness. Or you were not trustworthy. It's for you to know and for me to read the King of Swords. The King of Swords, that of truth. Five of Cups. Looking right at that Five of Cups, the disappointment. Has your past, is the truth, pile number three, that your past has disappointed you? Have you been disappointed in your past? That has led you to be trusted now in the Page of Pentacles. The practical application of what you have learned in your past, you are now applying to your life in the present. Beautiful. Let's take a look. The Ace of Pentacles, a brand new beginning, and right above that King of Pentacles. The Four of Wands, a feeling of a safe place, a safe place in the world, a home. And is that in your heart? It looks like it with this spiritual, the spirituality of, and a brand new, you've got two aces, a brand new beginning in love with the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups for me is a self-love card. Loving yourself first, healing that heart, learning to trust yourself again. After trickery, after skeevy, after lies and betrayal. I know that, that energy. I know that feeling of, of questioning and wondering, how can I trust myself when I was so absolutely fooled with this Seven of Swords. I know this energy. And it's through self-love and knowing your worth and going deep within to find your soul, your soul spirit, the spirit that is leading this Scorpio energy into a new direction. You have a new beginning, an Ace of Cups and an Ace of Pentacles. Could you have a new home with the Four of Wands? The Sun is in the middle of the tarot spread, along with the King of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups. Is your creativity going to make you money and give you a new beginning? Because that's what you love to do. Pile number three, I dare say yes. Let's take a look at the tarot. And where do I want to start? I want to start at that King of Pentacles. I am curious about that King of Pentacles right there. King of Pentacles, leadership, richness, perseverance. With all the wealth and majesty of the forest, the elk's presence is impressive. He holds his head high, confident with his worth and power. Ace of Pentacles, you're knowing your worth and power. Through diligence and methodical approach, the King of Pentacles has become a master of the material world. He will find a way to manifest whatever he desires. A committed and patient leader, the King of Pentacles provides for and protects those under his care. Very much a Taurus energy along with the bull who grounds the spirit of Scorpio, the opposition of Taurus. So as Scorpio says, dualism, the rising phoenix energies, feet planted firmly and the spirit soaring. At the same time, your feet are firmly planted with the king of pentacles. You are soaring into a new beginning and a new direction, letting your soul and trusting your soul to lead you in a direction that you will love that will bring you closer to your heart's desire. And if in the past you were dealing with the Seven of Swords, dealing with lies and betrayal, you have done the work. 
and loved yourself and found your spirit to lead you in a new direction. And that's leading you to happiness. I want to look at the Knight of Pentacles because I'm going to save that sign. That's right in the middle of the spread. So, the Knight of Cups, because this is the creative night for me. So, the Knight of Cups. Romance, charm, and sensitivity. A spirited narwhal pierces the ocean waters with his spiral tusks. The unicorn of the sea skillfully whirls his magic to captivate those he desires. As a sensitive and diplomatic being, he is highly receptive and responsive to all the emotional state of his environment. Although soft and gentle, he will boldly defend whom he loves, just like the King of Pentacles. Allow your heart to inform your decisions. It intimately understands your emotional needs and the needs of others. Beautiful. And finally, this sun card. I really am loving this for you. Pile number three. You have really healed your heart. You've done the soul work to bring you to the sun. Optimism, warmth, joy, uplifted. No matter how dark the night, the sun will always rise. Like an eagle, spread your wings and soar on this new day just like the phoenix rising with the scorpio card from your elevated vantage point the view is clear and expansive you can see both the path that lies ahead and the path that led you here which is exactly what this pick a card is about how has my past impacted my present and that is by going through the darkness, by doing the soul work, by healing maybe a broken heart, and trusting your intuition, your spirit, your direction, your self-love, your spirituality. Again, finding that safe place to do the healing, finding that safe place to start creating. It could be a new home to really begin on this golden opportunity, which is you, pile number three, which has brought you to this King of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles applies what it is they've learned through disappointment. It could have been with an air sign, just say. The King of Swords is the one who speaks the truth, sees the truth, and who will cut those out of their lives that no longer aligns with them. And that's exactly what you've done, pile number three. Bask in the radiant healing, warmth of the sunshine. Invigorated by this energy, embrace life with a renewed sense of wellness and enthusiasm. The sun is the ultimate source of life for our planet and the arrival of this card signals a, con a connection to this fundamental force. You have the power to breathe life into places that are withered and cold. And that's exactly what you're doing. That's how your past, and it could be for a lot of you, pile number three, a heartbreak, a really, and now you have done the work that you have a heart of gold, that you can be trusted, and you can trust yourself to, to be. You are, you are protected. You're protecting those that you love with the King of Pentacles, but you are protected. Protected by your angels, protected by God. Of course you are, because you are the sun, not just to you, but to others and all those around you. And it's because you have learned from disappointment, from um, betrayal. You have cut those out of your life. You have learned more and thanked them for being skeevy and being dishonest and being neglectful and being, for some of you, hateful. Thank you, because you have taught me lessons that I need to experience the sun, to move forward in a different direction, to have a new beginning in both love and my finances, to maybe own your own home. Maybe, for some of you. And that's what I see for you. Pile number three. This has been a, this has been, this is one of my favorites. This has been a good one. And that's what I see for you. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye.
for now.